Hi, and welcome to an introductory workshop to virtual machines in Linux. My name is Samsung Jha, and I'll be guiding you through this workshop. Now, why would you want to use a virtual machine? Uh, using a virtual machine allows you to try out different operating systems without having to install on the host machine. Uh, with this setup, one can benefit from a different workflow environment, which may be more suitable or compatible with a certain task. One such virtual machine platform is VirtualBox. Now, why would you want to use Linux? Linux is an open source operating system based on the Linux kernel. Um, there exist many distributions or distros or commonly known as flavors of Linux which cater to different user needs. For example, there exist uh, lightweight distributions that can run on embedded machines like the Raspberry Pi. Linux provides uh, an efficient workflow for certain tasks. Now, what are the prerequisites that you need to have to uh, follow along with this workshop? You need a, a Windows machine with a fairly recent processor, at least 8 GB RAM, you need a network access, and a Linux distribution of your choice. In this uh, workshop, we'll be covering Linux Mint, and you'll need time. So the first step is to download VirtualBox. So to do that, just search for VirtualBox on your search, search engine and click on the first link that shows up. From there, go to Downloads and download VirtualBox. Uh, make sure you have Python installed. Uh, if you run into an error that tells you that uh, you need Python core Win32 API bindings to continue with this installation, open a terminal window in Windows and type pip install pywin32. Uh, this should fix your issue. Um, uh, make sure you restart your, the install for VirtualBox and this will finish the installation process. Uh, to install a Linux distribution, in this case, we'll be installing Linux Mint. Uh, so uh, search for Linux Mint in the search bar and click on the first thing that shows up. This will bring you to this web page as seen here. Uh, uh, make sure you click on Downloads and then you'll be guided to the download screen. Uh, there are many uh, options uh, for um, the Linux Mint distribution. The one we'll be downloading is the Cinnamon Edition, which has the most features and is uh, very user friendly. So we'll be downloading that in this workshop. To set up uh, VirtualBox, the first step is to first of all open uh, VirtualBox, then click on New as seen here. Once you click New, you'll be greeted with this uh, window. So you can type in your uh, virtual machine name here. Um, under ISO image, click on other and search for your uh, like ISO image where you downloaded it and click on open. Uh, then click on next. Uh, in the, on this uh, page, you need to set your username, password and the host name of your virtual machine. After you have set those, click on next. Uh, on this page, it is recommended that you set um, as much RAM as you can uh, possibly set on, as long as within the green bar. And for the same thing for the processor, as long as it's within the green bar, you should be fine. Uh, for, for the virtual hard disk, you can set as much uh, um, uh, sp space you have on your hard disk. I recommend 25 GB because that's the default. Uh, that concludes the setup of the virtual box uh, and the virtual machine. You can click finish and it should boot up into your virtual machine, as you can see here. Uh, click on start Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon 64-bit and it should show you the uh, splash screen for uh, your operating system, if you followed along with the steps correctly. Once you boot it in, uh, you should be greeted with the uh, install Linux Mint uh, icon on the desktop. Double click on this, will start the installation visit. The installation visit uh, on the first page shows you a different set of languages. We are starting off with English, but you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, on this page, you need to set your keyboard layout. Uh, commonly, most keyboard layouts are English-US, but if your uh, 
keyboard layer is different, make sure to set it up here. Uh, you have a choice to install multimedia codecs. In this workshop, I won't be installing multimedia codecs. Uh, I'll click on continue. On this page, it says erase disk and ins install Linux Mint. What this does is, it'll, on the virtual hard drive, it will clear everything and uh, install Linux Mint on that virtual hard drive. This won't delete any of your files. So clicking on install now will install Linux Mint on this virtual hard drive. Um, uh, you need to select your uh, location. I am located in Dubai, so I'm going to select Dubai and click on continue. On this page, it'll ask you for uh, your name. Uh, it'll ask you for your computer name, username, password. Make sure you s select login automatically as it's uh, convenient to log into your virtual machine without having to type in the password all the time. And it's, all, it's already secure as you're going to boot up into Windows anyways or whatever um, like host machine operating system you're going to use. So it's fine if you s uh, select login automatically. It's just a convenient thing. So click on continue. And now I'll install uh, Linux Mint for you. So once you're done with installing Linux Mint, the next step is to set up guest editions. What guest editions allows you to do is go full screen, as well as other quality of life changes that, ha that help you to uh, like better use your virtual machine. So the first step is click on devices and click on insert guest editions CD image. Once you boot it in, you should see this, this uh, icon on your desktop. So double click on that disk icon. This will open the autogram, uh, uh, this will open a file. Uh, on this window, click on open autogram prompt. Uh, click on run. On this page, it will tell you to type in your password, make sure to do that. And on a terminal window, you should see this. Um, in the end, it should say, uh, please return to close this message. Make sure you don't have any errors. If you do, try restarting and uh, it should install it for you. You should have no issues with installing virtual uh, guest editions. Now with guest editions installed, we can go into full screen mode. So click on, uh, uh, press right control and F. What this does is it will swap to full screen. So you should see a, di a dialog box appear. Uh, make sure to click on switch and you should enter full screen mode. Now, uh, once you boot it in, right click on the desktop and click on display settings. This will open a window. On this window, select the resolution drop box and click on uh, the resolution that your device uses. In this case, I'll be using 1920 into 1080. And click on apply. Now your uh, virtual machine should be in full screen as well as the resolution of your uh, device. Now the next step is the most essential step of this process as to um, update and upgrade all the files on the virtual machine. So to do that, open the terminal, which is the third icon on the taskbar after the start, after the Linux Mint icon. This will open a terminal. Now on this terminal, or rather in this terminal, click on, type in sudo apt update. Uh, this will update uh, your operating system. Afterwards, make sure to type in sudo apt upgrade and that concludes the essential step. Now once you have updated and upgraded our virtual machine, the next step is to download VS Code. Uh, since we plan on like typing code or programming on this um, virtual machine for, for example, work, VS Code is a great, um, virtual, like, it's a great environment to code. So to install VS Code, open the uh, browser of your choice. Most Linux distributions will have Firefox pre-installed, so we'll be using Firefox. So in the search bar, just search for VS Code. Um, it's usually the first link. Uh, then click on .deb install. Uh, once that's downloaded, just double click on the installer. This will open uh, the, uh, a dialog box as you can see here. 
Um, click on install package and this GUI will install the uh, package for you, the sorry, VS Code for you. Once it's installed, uh, click on Linux Mint on the taskbar and type in VS and it should be the first thing you see. This will open VS Code for you. Uh, the next step is to set up the environment for VS Code. In this case, uh, for example, if you wanted to program in C++, you need like a, a setup for C++, like an environment for C++. So, to, um, so, so, so for the first step, so for the first step, what we need to do is we need to install, uh, we need to write, run this command in the terminal. So, type in sudo apt install the build hyphen essentials gdb. This will make sure you have a compiler installed in your uh, Linux uh, distribution. In this case, Linux Mint. Once you have done that, uh, go, go back into VS Code and click on the extensions icon on the uh, left side, left pane. Uh, type in VS Code in the search bar, sorry, type in C++ in the search bar and click on install on the first extension that you see. Uh, once it's installed, you should see this, um, the icons change here from uh, download, from install to disable. That means you successfully installed the extension. Um, the next step, um, I'm going to introduce you to some basic terminal commands. So uh, what does ls do? Uh, what ls does is, um, it shows you all the uh, files in the current directory. So, for example, over here, as you can see, I'm in the uh, topmost directory in Linux, which is tilde, the tilde sign. If I type ls, you can see that the files that are current in this, currently in this directory are desktop, downloads, pictures, and so on. So this shows me all the current files that, that are there in this directory. So if I wanted to go in a certain, uh, for example, folder or directory, what I can do is I can type in cd and the directory I want. For example, if I want to go into desktop, I type cd desktop. And as you see, I'm currently in desktop now because it's like tilde slash desktop. That means I'm currently in desktop. Now, for example, if I wanted to create a folder called projects in this desktop uh, directory, what I can do is that I can type mkdir and then type in the name of the direct, like the folder I want. So in this case, I type in projects. This will create a folder called uh, projects. Then I can cd into projects and create a new, uh, for example, subfolder called C++ projects. Um, so again, we use the mkdir. Now, if you want to, if you want to add a space um, in between, like the name of your directory, you need to add single quotes. So that's what I've done here. You add a single quote and then you type in C++ and then you, uh, space projects and that will allow you to add a space between your uh, names. Um, if you type ls, as you can see we created the directory. Uh, to cd into this directory you need to add the uh, semi quotes, sorry, the single quotes as well. Um, so just make sure you do that and this will uh, like uh, navigate you into that directory called C++ projects. Once you're in there, to create a new file that you can like type code in, you can type, you can, uh, in the terminal, you can type in touch hello underscore world dot cpp for example, and this will create a new file um, that you can type, that, that's editable. Uh, now to, to see what permissions a file has, um, you can type in ls minus l. Now, in this directory, there's only one file that's hello world.cpp that we just created using the touch command. Um, as you can see, it says uh, rw hyphen rw hyphen r. What that means is it's readable, writable, but not executable. Um, and it's, it, the, the reason is rw rw r. Because there are three groups in Linux. Uh, 
So to make it executable, what we need to do is we need to use the command chmod and then triple seven. That makes all the uh, like uh, it makes it rwx rwx rwx. What that means is um, that the file is executable. So uh, like once we um, write code into this file, if uh, and like choose to run it, it will actually execute. So once we've done that, um, we can we can like test that we can check if that the uh, permissions that we set are using the chmod command uh, are s like set successfully using the ls minus l command. So you, uh, as you can see, like we changed it from rw uh, to rwx. This means that the file is executable, executable now. Um, w once that's done, we can uh, type in the command code hello underscore world dot cpp and like begin coding on uh, into this into this file. Uh, below, uh, this is the code that I'll be running. So this is simple hello world um, file in C plus plus. So um, to run this file, we need to use the GCC compiler. Uh, so the command is gcc and then you, the file name that you're trying to execute so hello underscore world of cpp and then use the argument dash o and then you type in the executable name so in this case i want the executable name to be hello underscore world so this will create a dot exe or it'll create an executable executable for me um, then what i can do is i can type in dot slash hello underscore world, what dot slash does is it'll execute the executable that I've created using the compiler. Now we're going to use these commands in a C++ project and show you how you can create and execute the program. So the first step is to navigate to this uh, GitHub repository that contains the code for this workshop. So to do that, uh, just click on the link in this presentation. Uh, this will open the GitHub repository. So to install this, um, we need to install git first into the virtual machine. So just type in, so go to the, go to the terminal, type sudo apt install git. And this will download git first. Once you run the previous command for uh, git the next uh, as you can see we've uh, successfully installed git the next step is to clone the, this repository so type in git clone then go to your web browser and take this link right here once you have that link is paste into the terminal uh, type in we use control shift v to paste into the terminal and hit enter uh, this will clone our uh, repository as you can see is done uh, this we clone this uh, repository into tilde so to uh, open that just open the file explorer and it should be the first thing you see here so as you can see we have the code right here uh, so we can open the code up. To view it. And this is the code we'll be using. Uh, but we prefer to open this in VS Code. And currently like uh, this, this won't run. As we don't uh, have it set to executable. So what we need to first is. Uh, let's uh, go back to the terminal. So type in ls. So currently we are on tilde, which is like the topmost directory. Uh, so type in cd desktop, cd projects, as we already created projects earlier. So let's create a new project. So mkdir. Uh, let's call it. Uh, calculator calculator so we create a new uh, project called calculator so we can cd into it so 
currently it's empty so we need to create we, we need to create a file what we can do instead is we can just drag the file we have we got from the repository so we can copy this then go into our folder for projects let me minimize this go into projects as you see we did the, the calculated file directory and we can just paste it here Okay, uh, now we need to set up the file permissions. So first let's see what permissions we have on this file. Uh, as you can see it's not RWX, that means it's not executable. So we need to change that. So the way we do it as earlier, we, we use chmod and then sum 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 and then the file name. So simple calculator.cpp. Now we can check that the changes are reflected. And as you can see, it's RWX now, and it's highlighted green. I mean, it's, it's executable. Now, to bring up a VS Code, what we can do is type in code, and then type in the name of the file. So simple calculator dot cpp, and this will bring up Visual Studio Code. Um, we can just click on Open. And as you can see, this is the code we have. So what this program does is, it prompts the user to enter a number, and this number is the float. So then the user is given like a menu, uh, where it tells the current value. So if the user enters like 5 first, then it shows the current value here. Then it shows the user options, so they can choose to multiply, divide, add, subtract, or raise to an exponent, exponent or 6 they can exit and print to a file so what do you mean by print to a file? Uh, by printing to a file I mean like writing to a file so uh, whatever output we have for example when we multiply two numbers we can store it into a, a text document so th that's what we'll do in this uh, program and like if the user chooses like we have a if condition here that uh, like when the user chooses any of these options it will like go to the respective option uh, this function here uh, like this handles all the like uh, choices so for input 1 we have multiplication for input 2 we have division input 3 addition input 4 subtraction and input 5 is exponential So let's see how this runs. So now that we have set this to executable, what we can do is bring up the terminal window again. So to run the file, what we need to do is you type in the command g++ simple calculator.cpp use argument dash o and uh, we, can add, we can write any name for the executable. So I'll just call it calculator. As you can see, it's executed successfully. If you have any comp compilation errors, they will show up here. Um, now we can execute the um, executable that we created using the compile. So use dot slash and type in the name calculator that we set for the executable. And as you can see, the code is running fine. So uh, I'll enter a number. Suppose we want to multiply 3.2. Now say I want to uh, like store this result to a file. So I can type in 6 and this will create a file called, uh, if, we'll, if we go to our code, we will create a file called result.txt in our directory and we can confirm by navigating to it. And as you can see, um, it stored the result of our uh, calculation now if you were to like overwrite this file by running this again it should reflect the change so we, we don't need to compile it again we can just use dot slash uh, like the name of the executable so dot slash calculator and now we can like type in 
numbers. So suppose I want to divide 5 by 2.5 for example. And I want to print this result to the far. Now as you can see there is the uh, it warns you saying that it's uh, the file is changed on disk. If you click on reload, uh, you can see that uh, the changes are reflected on the file. The previous result is overwritten. Um, one more uh, tidbit of information. Uh, instead of like navigating to a file like how we normally do it, like ls and then go cd desktop, what we can do instead is suppose um, you created this directory and you want to create a terminal here. It's, sorry, you want to open a terminal here. So what you do is you just right click and there's an option called open in terminal. That, that, that speeds up you know, the process of, finding, like, of navigating to this uh, directory in the terminal. Because like, it is here, you know? And as you can see, like, we're in this directory. And we can execute the files as we normally do. So, Carol, see you later. And as you can see, it's running fine. Thank you for joining the Speaks Workshop. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Stay tuned for next week's workshop. Have a nice day.